Hello all, um, so here's another sort of XR video and we're going to be covering AR Foundation today. So since we covered sort of open XR last time and sort of VR in Unity, we are going to now do AR in Unity and how one can sort of set up their projects um, so that the, the content will then work on their phones and sort of ease of use after that. Um, okay, so normally for AR and Unity, you have two options. You have the built-in AR foundation that Unity provides, which is sort of free to use and has a lot of built-in stuff. Um, or you can use the second option, which is a lot more powerful. Um, it's called Vuforia. Only issue with Vuforia is that there's a paywall behind it um, in order to like sort of use the features and, and stuff like that um, without like a... A, a watermark so if you want to have a watermark and you kind of wanted to use Vuforia you can go ahead and do it um so sort of the pros with AR foundation is that first it's free to use super easy to use um it's lightweight uh the only problems with it is that it supports a limited devices so if your phone has AR core and AR kit it will work but for all the devices that don't have those features or sort of lower end devices that don't have those features um your application will not work on their phones. And that's where sort of Euphoria comes in, where you can sort of anything that has a camera, Euphoria works with on terms of image tracking and plane detection and things like that, which makes Euphoria an extremely powerful engine. Um, so for this demonstration, I'm just going to be showing you guys how to set up AR Foundation in particular. Um, so the reason why I'm using AR Foundation is, well, just as I sort of mentioned earlier, it's free to use, it's easy to use, and I've used it a bunch of times, and it's just, it is a really nice engine, um, AR engine to use. So why use AR in the first place? Um, AR can be used for many things. So plane tracking, so maybe you, you own a light company and you want to show off your lights to clients and stuff like that. You kind of build an app that then has 3D models of your lights in. You use AR tracking to scan walls, roofs, or floors, and then as you're sort of showing the client a light in your in your in the house and how it's gonna look, you kind of just go in and AR um, sort of select the light, spawn it, and it'll look like it's actually there. Which is the cool thing about AR. Obviously it won't exist in the real world. But on the phone screen, if you look at it through the, you know, have the camera, obviously, and then sort of the AR content overlaid onto it, so it kind of looks like it's in the real world, which makes AR so powerful. And some cool AR games, you can kind of, you know, you can kind of imagine um, sort of a sort of a space game or something where you, or fly swatter game. So maybe, maybe use AR core and then sort of play detection or something like that. That kind of like gets a quick map of your room. And kind of around, sort of what you can do is, you know, sort of aim your camera as a gun and then like press a button to actually sort of fire devices and maybe like shoot all these bugs that's, that's infiltrated your room or whatever space you're in. So it's always super cool. You can make some super cool fun stuff. Um, there's face tracking, so you can do like silly emojis. Um, so maybe if you have a certain expression or something like that, maybe a certain emoji will pop up. So it's super cool in that way. Um, the second thing is image tracking, or the next thing rather is image tracking. So you have a picture and then you would use an application or an AR application to scan the picture and then content will display over it. Um, so you can do some cool things. So maybe you have a, a big studio and then you kind of want to maybe have people that come in for the first time sort of be introduced to the history of it. And then what one would do is those users would then, um, sort of download the app and then maybe there's a big banner with all these images on. So as I go towards the image with their phone, they would kind of scan this, scan the content and it would kind of pop up in front of them and then they could like read about it or have this cool video play or have like an object coming out of the banner essentially. Some really cool things you can do with, with AR. Um, today we're going to be covering the image tracking one because it's nice and easy and it'll give you a good demonstration on what AR is, how it works, and all the tracking things of AR Foundation. So we're going to start lightweight. We're going to start with a very empty Unity template. So we're just going to use the 3D one, AR Foundation. I've set mine and we can go ahead and create now. And I'll take you through the steps on what happens after this. All right, fantastic. So we have a fresh and empty Unity project. So much possibilities with one of these. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so the first thing we're going to do is this is an optional step. It's kind of what I like doing. I kind of remove all the packages I don't need for my particular project. So I don't need the JetBrains write editor. I can remove that. Um, I use Visual Studio Code in particular for everything that I do. Um, there's only very few few cases where I actually use the Visual Studio editor itself. So I'm just going to remove that because I kind of don't need it. Uh, visual scripting, if you're not going to use Visual Studio or anything like that, um, this is the new kind of way of coding, sort of like Unreal's blueprint system, you can kind of think of it like that. Um, I don't need it, so I'm going to remove it. And then everything else is fine except for version control. I'm kind of, for this particular project, I'm not going to use it. And then second of all, I use GitHub and GitLab to do my stuff to sort of do version control, so I don't need any of this. With that out of the way and all the stuff removed, we are now going to add the packages we need. So first things first, we just switch our packages to Unity Registry. And then here you'll find all the sort of built-in packages that Unity kind of offers. Um, for our use case, we are going to use AR Foundation, as explained earlier. So we're going to install that. And then with that, also install all of its dependencies, such as the XR um, plugin manager and stuff like that. Okay, fantastic. Now that we've got AR Core, we are now going to, or not AR Core, we have AR Foundation. Now we have AR Core, which is the Android plugin, and AR Kit, which is the iOS plugin. So I start off with the AR Core one, the Android one, which I'm going to be using now in particular because this is a device I have. And then the XR plugin, or the AR Kit one. So there's the iOS when you want to build to iOS. Okay, fantastic. And now you would know that when you scroll down, you'll actually see that the XR plugin management has a tick on it. And then that came in with AR Foundation. So now we can just go ahead and this is the optional step. So I'm going to be using Universal Render Pipeline for my things just because of how easy and lightweight it is. Um, so I'm just going to install. Okay, fantastic. So just a summary. Scroll down, we need AR Foundation. AR Core for Android, AR Kit for iOS. Um, these two are just going to like sort of be brought in. What we used to have with AR Foundation, we used to have an, a different subsystems thing that we had to we had to download. Uh, we don't need that anymore. That's kind of built in now with this package. Uh, URP, this is completely optional, and then XR plugin management is what we need. Okay, fantastic. Let's actually set up our project now. So now that we have all the installed packages that we need, we're just going to go to build settings and change a few things here. So first of all, let's change the target platform over to Android. And then we can add our open scenes just because I sometimes forget the steps. So we kind of just do it now for this test. I'm going to be using the scene to demonstrate it. Okay, cool. Let's go into player settings and change some things here. So the first thing we want to do is obviously you can change your company name and product name here, set it to whatever you need it to, to be. Um, then you go to resolution and presentation once uh, project unity kind of wakes up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just go to resolution and presentation. Um, you can change some settings here, so render outside of safe mode. So if your phone kind of has like a notch on top of it, um, and you want to kind of render in that space, you can keep this ticked on. Uh, if you don't want to render within the notch space, you can then just sort of disable this mode. Uh, and you can just kind of just do everything that's kind of used here. You can just read these things and change this out to how you want it to be. Um, resolution scaling mode. So here's what we're actually going to change. So some phones have like some crazy high screen resolutions. So just to make sure that it doesn't utilize that full resolution, just sort of for optimization -ish, um, purposes, we're just going to go to fixed DPI and then target DPI. We'll change then to 300 because that's a good like sort of printing DPI. So just just make sure that the you know if you have a 4K display on your phone, it doesn't use all 4K because they'll like drain your battery. And Apple run probably a little bit sluggish, won't be running to its full potential because you kind of don't need that insane density. So I think 300 is like a perfect number. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go to other settings and it's change our color space to linear because linear just deals with lighting a lot more better, makes things look a lot more nicer. Okay, next we're going to remove the Vulkan graphic API. 
because if we have Vulcan, it will break when we're trying to build. We need to go ahead and change our minimum API level to 24. So API level on the right hand side, 24, and it's Android 7, no god. Uh, once again, the app will not build if you don't do this. Unity will log it out in a console, send it a comp build because the API level is too low. Uh, so we just need to change it to 24. Uh, scripting back in, we can go to IL2CPP and .NET 4X and then target architecture uh, 64. So we can just target 64-bit devices. Okay, and then that should be about it in terms of player settings okay cool so now what we can do is go into setup we can now set up the xr plugin management so you can go ahead and turn on ar core here if you don't do this the app will not run correctly it also will have this black screen and you won't understand why so just same way like we did with setting up open vr and oculus um, in the last tutorial we're just going to do this with uh, ar core uh, if you have ios this will probably say ar kit instead um, but because we're an Android AR core, and then I just like changing these two to optional because I had an issue once where the app wouldn't run until I did this or would keep showing me the black screen until I did this. So I tend to just do this all the time now. Uh, AR kit. So if you want to have face tracking, you can kind of actually tick that on here and then download that from the package manager as well. Uh, we don't really need to do this, but I'm just going to set that to optional anyways. Okay, cool. So that's all our project settings set up. So now the optional steps you don't have to do this this is anyone who's using urp like i am we're just going to go ahead and set that up now so i'm just going to set up a project folder so i can sort of separate third-party assets from the assets i generate i can go to settings make a settings folder and then we can make a urp settings if we want to separate lighting and stuff like that Okay, then we can go ahead and actually make our render pipeline. So create rendering URP and then I want to make a forward renderer with a pipeline asset. You can just call this mobile defaults. And then now to actually enable rendering in URP or AR rendering URP, you need to go to the forward renderer, which is generally the pipeline asset and then underscore renderer. Uh, inside the settings over here, we need to add the AR render feature. So we have render feature, add AR render feature, and it's called the AR background render feature. We need to add that. And if you want to enable post processing, you can do that here and then change all the other options you want here to sort of specify it for your needs. But this is kind of the basics we need for the AR to actually work. So we can save that, go to mobile default, and we just change some settings here. Because I'm going to be doing image tracking, I'm only kind of going to be showing sort of one bit of content at a time. So I can really just kind of pick up that cascades just to make it look a little bit nicer. The shadows, uh, let's do soft shadows. And then we don't need additional lights. That's not going to be a thing. Now, um, unless you want to have additional lights with your particular project, um, I'm disabling that because I don't need it. Uh, soft shadows, fine. That's fine. That's fine. And then depth texture, I generally turn on because I use that quite a bit. And I can turn off terrain holes. And that is about all we need in terms of that. So now we actually need to set up the URP in our project. So now with our project settings created for URP, we're just going to open up project settings, go to graphics, and then actually assign the URP um, pipeline that we just made now, or your pipeline asset that we just made now. And then I can just go to quality and kind of remove all the ones I don't need. I tend to keep medium for, for Android. And then we can just assign our mobile defaults here. So here's where you can make different sort of quality levels and you can have different quite uh, pipeline assets for your different quality levels. And you can kind of like settle that stuff here. So I'm not going to go too much into this. Uh, this is just kind of the basics that I use to set up. Okay, fantastic. Now with all that said, we can actually create our AR scenes. So first things first, we're just going to delete the main camera because we don't need it. We are going to add two things to get AR uh, foundation to work we need an AR session origin and an AR session so you can do that by right clicking in the hierarchy XR AR session origin first of all XR AR session so AR session origin this is kind of handles where this is kind of where we're going to put all our AR specific code so if we require certain components of um, AR foundation we're going to need to put all our code here and an AR session is kind of just like the middle point that it kind of needs to sort of handle input and stuff like that. 
So first things first is that's going to automatically select our camera. If this doesn't put your camera in for you, just kind of drag your AR camera into there. Uh, first thing I do on the camera is actually set it to main camera in case I ever need to use this tag for whatever particular reason, which I generally don't, but it's always there in case something kind of needs to use it. Uh, we are then going to turn on, uh, I didn't just change this to a different color so I can see if the app crashed or if the camera is not rendering. So just like a slighter gray. And then I just drop the alpha all the way down. And then what we can do is to make our AR content look a lot more believable and make it look like it fits into the real world a little bit better. We're going to use light estimation. So this will just make your content look a lot more better. We'll kind of get the lighting data and kind of assume a color on the main lights and sort of the intensity of it and the direction. So just sort of make your content fit a lot more better in the, in the, in the real world. And then phase and direction I keep as normal. So autofocus is where you can have like your camera actually focus on the content, which I like keeping on, especially stuff for like image tracking. Okay, fantastic. Now that all of that is on, we can actually test this now on the device. So, and see if the camera actually renders. Cause if the camera renders, then we know we've set this up correctly. So let's just go ahead. And if you have your device kind of um, on the ready and with USB debugging, you can go ahead and build and run. And then I'll just sort of set this here and then sort of put this as AR demo. All right, and then I'll see you once this is done. All right, cool. So first time Android was not gonna take long to set up. So there we go, that's kind of woken up. Now it's kind of already asking for permission. If it's allowed to sort of use the camera. Um, so we can actually just kind of say yes while using the app. And then as you can see, the app has woken up. Excuse the horrible frame rate on the, on the computer right now, but as you can see, it's essentially working. Let's just see if we can flip the orientation. There we go. Fantastic. All right, cool. So there we go. Now the camera is actually working. So now that we know that AR content is working. So from here, we can actually sort of create AR content now. So let's just close all on that side and let us now continue. So I'm just going to go to defaults and just sort of set that to um, auto rotate. I'm just going to have it just sort of force it on landscape left for now. I think that's going to be the right one. We'll see. Um, and then default, we're just going to keep it to default that on landscape left. Okay, fantastic. So let's just save that. That's done. Now let us create AR content. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just kind of bring in um, some materials and stuff that I made last time. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, foundation, assets, project. I made a few meshes and materials. I just want to like kind of bring in. And let's do that. All right, cool. So I just kind of brought in some materials. All this is just some stuff I was playing with with uh, Shader Graph yesterday. Once again, this is just some. This is once again just for all the URP users. Uh, Shader Graph is beautiful. You guys should try it out. I've only like started messing around with it properly yesterday, so that's kind of what's 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 going on. Okay, cool. So anyways, all I have is just some custom materials. I have two AR content stuff here that I'm going to be show, use, using in the application itself. So there it is right there. Those two things we're going to be scanning images and these things are going to be popping up. So it's going to be the idea. Uh, and I kind of already have them as prefabs. So yeah, that's over there is what we're going to be using in our, in our AR application. So that's going to be super fun. Okay, cool. So first things first is I'm just going to kind of bring in um, some code as well. So I'm just going to make a folder which didn't work for some reason. Hold scripts. And then I'm just going to sort of bring that code in. I believe that's the right code. Let's just find out. And kind of this is what you're going to be using to actually scan and use uh, multiple AR content. Just load that to the solution file. Okay, so this is the right one. So first things first, um, as you can see in this code, 
Let me just kind of bring that in a little closer. So all this code is essentially uh, is using AR Foundation and the AR subsystems. Um, this is just we requiring the components of AR Track Image Manager just so that we don't have null refs when that when we kind of assign the script to it. Uh, this is something we're going to be assigning on the AR session origin because sort of any AR sub foundation content needs to exist on that. Uh, we kind of just have for, I kind of just have a list of AR content that I want to sort of place. Um, I just kind of make a dictionary, which I think I'm actually going to optimize this code a little bit more because kind of not really needed. Actually, like maybe changes for an event or something. But otherwise, all this is is we just set in the screen to never sleep. We are getting the AR track image manager, and then we are essentially just creating new content from AR objects, and we're sort of giving it the name, the actual object's name. We're just sort of turning it off right at the start, and we're kind of just spawning those things in giving it a name and then keeping them off so we can reference them once an image is actually found and then we just subscribe into track image changes and that essentially just checks for ar changes uh event arguments is kind of what you're going to need to use uh, quite a lot when you want to get any sort of track image events from it and essentially all this code does is it just checks through everything checks if the image name matches the prefab's name from the AR objects that we added right at the start. And then if it does, it kind of turns everything else off and then only turns that content on. So that's the super basic of it and just kind of sets its position and its rotation based on the image. So that when you kind of move the image around in the real world, the content kind of moves with it, which is super cool. Okay, so all that is, is we're just gonna add that tracked image onto that. And then notice how it kind of actually adds our required component, the AR tracked image manager right there, which is super cool. So notice here what it wants, it needs an XR reference image library. So here's where we actually add our images that need to be scanned. So I'm just gonna to go to project, and we're gonna make a new folder called data. And then here's where I'm actually gonna add my image library so we can create. Uh, all the way down XR and we can have a reference object library which I haven't played around with just yet and then we have a reference image library which is what we're going to use I think reference AR of, uh, or reference object library is for more catered to iOS uh, and then image library is kind of 2D so this is kind of 2D scanning and that's actually 3D scanning so that is super cool so we're just going to add that and we're just going to call it our default library And then notice on the right hand side here in the inspector, we can actually add some images and do some things that we want to do here. So I have a bunch of textures that are brought in. So I have a little texture over here that I'm going to scan one of the images. And here's my mouse pad that you kind of saw a little bit earlier. Uh, so when you want to scan images, you need to make sure they are in JPEG format or else they won't work and Unity will throw it out. So whenever you want to scan images or have images for scanning, uh, you kind of have it here. Make sure it's a JPEG and then you can kind of import it. Let's go back to our data, our image, and we can, we're can we going to add two. So we're going to add our first one. We're going to give it a name. So this name needs to kind of add um, sort of link to the content name because that's what my code does in particular. So the first one, I called it AR content, which you can just change this like marker one, marker two, marker three, marker four, depending on the amount of markers you have. Um, so I'm just going to give mine a name of AR content. I'm going to select my mouse pad. And then I'm just going to specify its real life size. So in meters is what it actually wants. So one, so X, if I put one here, that's representing one meter. Um, but right now this thing is about, not even maybe, maybe 30 centimeters. So it's going to three. And then that's kind of all we need to, Right, keep printing text on the time. I kind of just don't use this. So first of all, okay, so that's our first image added. Now just add our second one, which is going to be that picture that I have. And then I call this, I think, the river, if I'm not mistaken. We can have to look quickly. Um, project, prefabs, okay, we have AR content, and we have river. So that's fantastic. Um, and we just specify the size a little bit smaller. It's about 2, point, maybe point 0.2, point 0.25 maybe. 
Um, okay, so we kind of add in the image that we want. We're giving it a name. Uh, my code looks for this name. Right over here where it kind of checks for the um, the game objects that we're looking for, which is in objects. And if the game object's name is the same as the tracked image that we've just found, if it's the same as the name of that, uh, or if it's not the same as that, we'll switch it off. Everything else will stay on. So we can actually optimize that code a little bit better, but for today's example, I'm just going to kind of leave it as that. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is go back to our AR session origin and apply that. So just click on a serialized library and we can just kind of assign that default library. Uh, track image prefab, we don't have to worry about here because we're going to be adding our content over here. So just go back to prefabs open AR session origin, and then just drop our content inside here just by locking it first. Okay, so now we have AR content there, we have river there, and we can now unlock that. So now, if we save this and hit play mode, these two markers should now spawn. So now we have AR content, which is sort of our marker one, essentially. Uh, notice in AR how everything is scaled to point 0.1, so AR works on a completely different scale. Uh, generally, you would go, you would sort of reference a cube. Um, and when you sort of set that to about, um, well, let's put that in the center, excuse me. And then you normally center that to about 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So AR scale works a little bit different. You've got to scale it a little bit smaller. And then it would look quite large. Because if you have a scale of 1, 1, 1, remember this is working in meters. So... One, one, one will be in real life, one meter, one meter, one meter. So essentially this now is going to take up um, about, so that's 10 centimeters. So 0 0.1 of a meter is 10 centimeters. So this will take up a little bit over like 20, a little over 20 centimeters on my desk space once it tracks the image. So just bear that in mind, one meter, uh, one cube size, or scale of a cube one, equals to one meter in real life. So just kind of bear that in mind. Okay, so now that we've added that, we can actually now test this on our device. So let's go save that once again. A quick recap, AR session origin, we add our tracked image scripts, which essentially just checks for which objects we need and then checks a tracked image. So once we actually, once our, our tracked image manager finds an image, over here, it kind of subscribes to it. So unenable, undisable. So we unsubscribe from it once we're done with it. So we don't get any weird null refs. Uh, it kind of just switches all the stuff to off. And then once it finds, once it finds like tracking state or tracking. So once it's actually tracking an image, it just updates it, which then assigns a game object, which essentially just goes through everything, switches it on. And then everything that doesn't have the name essentially switches off. So this can be optimized better where instead you can kind of actually switch everything off, have a for each loop, and then actually once it's found the image, it just completely breaks out of the loop. Um, you can do that, you can optimize this code a lot more better. Uh, just sort of something I used at the time. So let's save and let us build and let's see what happens. So I'm just gonna go and build and run. And let's build and run the demo. All right, epic. So here we go, let's just make this a lot more bigger so you guys can kind of see what's going on. All right, cool. So there is my camera. Once again, just excuse the choppy frame rate. Uh, so now once we go, now that we've built our app, if we go and scan this marker, just by zooming out, all you need to do is just kind of hover your phone over it. Boom, notice how the marker is now actually spawned. Really freaking cool. And with the light estimation, it kind of estimates the amount of light in the room and just makes it look like it fits a lot more better. So there it is over there. If I kind of take this and move this, notice how it tracks its position quite nicely. So that is super cool. All right, and then if we go ahead and add the new marker, so if I just go and cover up the old marker, it'll essentially lose its tracking, disappear. So now let's add the next marker onto it. And notice how it like catches it and spawns it immediately. So there it is right there. There is my second marker. Once again, same thing. Can kind of just like move it around. And kind of just like sticks there. If I kind of put this in my hand. Stand up. Just try and capture the marker. Okay, there we go. 
Now I can kind of like move it and it tracks its positional data quite well. All right, so that's fantastic. So there is image tracking with augmented reality. So I'm going to remove that, have that now spawn the next AR content. So yeah, super sick, super fun. And you can kind of capture this from any angle. So I kind of put this like upside down. Kind of captures that now. So there we go. That is AR content and that is um, AR system. That's how it's kind of like glitching around. Okay, there we go. Fantastic. All right, thank you all for watching. That is AR Foundation and sort of the sort of very basic way to set up some sort of image tracking in AR. So as you can see, it's super easy to set up. It is super useful. Um, sort of there's a demonstration of shader graph stuff working in um, sort of augmented reality. So go well with this and make some cool stuff. Catch you guys later.